Hi, my name's Aisha. I'm an ex-Muslim living in Australia, and today I want to tell you why I'm awesome without Allah. Feeling awesome about leaving someone does not in any way impact the ontological state of that someone, meaning his existence. Reality doesn't care about your feelings. If I feel awesome about leaving my parents, that won't make my parents stop existing by default. And neither Allah, if you decide to leave him, that is. Saying goodbye to Allah has given me the opportunity to say hello to new experiences and people within my life. For example, my lovely little Italian greyhound dog. He puts his nudgies all over my bed and house and I love it. Idiotic. She must be oblivious to the fact that the nudges she's so much in love with carries Capnocytophaga canimorsis bacteria. Difficult name, right? And it's found in dog saliva. It can cause diseases and even death in humans. I'm not kidding, guys. Google it. That said, having dogs in Islam is a fiqh issue. Imam Malik is of the opinion that it is permissible as long as you keep them outside, for example, in the garden, and for a purpose. Since leaving Islam, I've gone on to get three university degrees, including a bachelor's and two master's. Her flex about getting 29 masters is based on the assumption that somehow in Islam you can't. Seriously? Seriously? Well, what about all these PhD Muslims? Aren't you implying that leaving Islam is a requirement to get a degree? Truth is that Islam promotes acquirement of knowledge. But these people lack the critical skills to not conflate their toxic environments with normative aspects of religion. Now, of course, being an ex-Muslim is my full-time profession and only personality trait, but I've also been able to go on and do other things with my life. I work across the legal, social sciences, and education sectors, and I'm also looking forward to starting my PhD in the coming couple of years, which will be very exciting. And why is that relevant? I thought this was supposed to inform us on reasons to leave Islam, not a list of superficial things that any random Muslim I can do. I'm getting justified into believing this, another shallow ex-Muslim. Think about it. Would you base your choosing of your paradigm and understanding of life and supposedly of a metaphysical reality on things so mundane? On getting licked by a dog? SubhanAllah. And sure, we get it. You have a life. One in which you guys never stop obsessing about Islam. When I'm not studying and working, my absolute favorite thing to do is travel the world. This time last year, I traveled all over Vietnam with my partner and had a life-changing experience. Narrated by Bukhari, a man once asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, a question and said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to go out with such and such an army, but my wife wants to go for Hajj. He said, Go with her. Subhanallah. He gave priority to the man traveling with his wife over enlisting him in the army. Now, in Islam, a woman is allowed to go anywhere she wants as long as her mahram, dad, husband, whatever it is, is with her. And to provide safety and company, remember guys that it hasn't always been 2020 and even today not everywhere is safe and not every travel ends with a happy ending. God loves us, but these people can only see have a very negative approach to life. Leaving Islam has meant living my life on my own terms and conditions. And I'll let you in on a little secret, I've never been happier. Anybody can leave their lives according to their own terms and conditions. Does that mean they are right? Not necessarily. Hitler lived up to his own terms and conditions. Sadly, for these ex-Muslims, they don't even possess the objective moral compass to tell us why he was wrong nor why they are right. All they can do is appeal to their hedonistic, subjective preferences, which nobody cares about. Why should we? As philosopher Simon Blackburn explains, moral relativism fails as a moral system simply because it cannot arbitrate disagreements. Who's right, who's wrong? Nobody cares. And when that happens, the result is the widespread of moral degeneration that we witness today. Three hours later. Finally, if I had to summarize this video in a sentence, that would be, here's a list of shallow superficial things I base changing my worldview on. And between us guys, 
Are we surprised? Are we? That's the typical ex-Muslim for you, self-entitled, pseudo-intellectual that can't help but look down on others because, ah, they achieved liberation. Liberation from not being allowed the nudges of dogs and cleaning themselves too much. Assalamu alaikum.